Welcome to Real Physics. Another video about how much nonsense is floating around in theoretical physics. And, well, <laughs> I admit, I don't even watch all the recent developments and what crap is coming out of these publications. But thanks to Sabine Hossenfelder, I came to know this. And the title is The Strange Shape That Could Replace Space Time. And, uh, of course, it's nonsense and I wholeheartedly agree with Sabina's critique, but I think there is a little bit of superficiality at the end in the discussion because the problem is a real one. So let's have a look and go through the video and then add some more fundamental questions to this problem. The reason I didn't talk about this previously is that I think it's not remotely as interesting as the headlines in certain magazines would want you to believe. Yes, that's exactly true. I mean, what this amplitohedron does is just a kind of dumb idea how to perform calculations. There is nothing fundamental, nothing basic, nothing of elementary physics, nothing of the deep questions in here. and. I mean, we should add here that this is, I think, a textbook example of what Alfred North Whitehead called the fallacy of misplaced concreteness. If you take the formalism for the real thing, and this is how a big part of modern theoretical physics is done. It's incredible. Let's go ahead. The only reason they write about this at all is that nothing else is happening in the foundations of physics. So true, but we should ask the question when all this did start, if you say nothing is happening now. So what's the time scale of this fizzing going astray and what's the deeper reason? We're coming back to this later. Now she's talking about Nima Akami Hamid, who is the inventor of all this stuff and let's listen. I'd put him among the most intelligent people I've ever met. Yeah, I don't agree here. To begin with, I mean, how do you know he's so smart? I mean, let him do an IQ test, okay, but you, you can't... I, I somehow want to challenge this attitude. Oh, I don't understand what he's doing, so he must be so smart. I don't know. To me, he seems... I mean, no offense, no personal attack here, but to me, he seems more like an imposter, like an actor who is pretending to do fundamental physics. But I mean, all this stuff is completely detached from reality. And you might call him smart as Witten, but I mean, Witten has stalled, let's be honest, physics for decades. Okay, we have no progress. And instead, this crazy development that Sabine Hossenfelder justly calls mathematical science fiction. So. Why do you think these people are so intelligent? I mean, we know physicists who are really geniuses. These are Einstein, Dirac, Heisenberg, Schrödinger and the like. And they have achieved something tangible. Okay, But the work of people like Arkami Hamid and Witten has not the faintest resemblance to these fundamental foundations of physics which were built a century ago. Sorry. So stop to review these comic figures of so-called modern theoretical physics, please. But mathematically, the standard model is what we call a quantum field theory. It's a <sighs> framework. Okay, unfortunately, Sabine is here too naive with respect to the established physics. I mean, she does wonderful work and I understand that she cannot criticize everything, but take a serious look from a historical perspective at these theories and Unfortunately, it turns out that also the wonderful quantum electrodynamics, which is at the base of every possible imaginable quantum field theory, is bullshit. I mean, I have made a video about this. You can watch this one or you can watch this video, which is excellent, excellent channel, see the pattern, or go to the papers of Oliver Konsar, who in detail described all the frauds and absurdities and factors at the in the history of quantum electrodynamics this theory is incredible okay and everything unfortunately which is built upon we cannot believe either and the formalism that we currently use figuring out what happens when two particles or more get close to each other for example because the LHC slams them into each other this is of course also in this imposed paradigm of describing everything with particles and probabilities. This is flawed at its core and we come back to how this problem is indeed related to how we perceive or describe space-time. 
we'll come back to this. Really what Feynman diagrams are is a funky way to write integrals. The amplitudehedron now is a better way to calculate all those Feynman diagrams. What does that mean? A new method to calculate crap. And even if it were not crap, it's just a new calculating method. That makes it sound rather boring, and that's why some popular news outlets have tried to make you believe that it reveals a deeper truth, <sighs> namely that space-time itself doesn't exist. Yeah, I really dislike this sensational tone here. That's how physics today works. I mean, bring up something completely irrelevant and, and touch a bold, catchy, sensational title and you're considered a theoretical genius. So I really like Sabine's comments here. Or depending on whom you ask, loops or hypergraphs or eight-dimensional carrots, who knows? I think this is all nonsense and little <laughs> Albert agrees. Yeah. Quantum mechanics, a theory that's more than a century old, is not a theory in space-time either. It's uh -huh. a theory in an infinite uh -huh. dimensional Hilbert space. No, I think I disagree. It's a little bit tangential and you may consider that a detail, but I think this is inaccurate if not false. What you have to consider here is the concept of a fiber bundle and while the bundle, the stage so to speak where everything takes place is still our usual space-time, the fiber is indeed a complex function which gives you, if you squared, the probability of encountering a particle that is the wave function and then you have a lot of wave function for different particles, which is another problem, but you can describe these wave function in terms of an Hilbert space, which is formally infinite dimensional, but it's kind of misleading to say that this is not space-time anymore, because whatever you have as a fiber, your bundle remains the same. More importantly, one shouldn't mistake maths for reality. I couldn't agree more that you shouldn't mistake math for reality, but now Let's go a little bit deeper into the problem. And I think there is a problem with space-time in the sense that we have to explain why we have this peculiar structure of three plus one dimensions. And we haven't resolved either why space and time are so phenomenologically different. This is a problem and it's usually swept under the rug. And what you have to do is do your history homework, go back and see what well, smart people in the past have done and where they possibly have gone astray. And one key issue here is I have talked about Minkowski's enthusiastic unification, what he called of space and time to space time. No, this is one of the key moments physics went wrong. And from 1909, physicists tend to gloss over the problem of these different phenomenologies when merging this into a four-dimensional whatever structure, okay? This is the first thing. If you want to understand this problem of space-time, then go still back in history and look what William Rowan Hamilton said. Somehow quaternions are a fundamental building block of the physical universe. Why that? What are quaternions? Well, I talked about this. Quaternions are a mathematical structure, an extension of complex numbers, a four-dimensional structure that resembles this three plus one dimensions in its algebra. And that's really exciting because it comes as a natural feature of mathematics. And this is the way theoretical physics should be done. You're not forcefully postulate fancy multidimensional stuff, okay? Just look at nature, look at the elementary things, and then try to get that in a natural way from mathematics. I've, yeah, talked about this many times, and I have also shown that the problem of space and time is indeed deeply related to fundamental constants, which is what I call the royal road to fundamental physics. You have to wonder about where these constants come from, are these the gods of modernity? No, that would be highly unsatisfactory. We ought to explain this. And as a matter of principle, we can hope for that. I described it in many videos and also in my book. But let's quote first another one who agreed that this is important. I'd like to state the law of nature, which is based upon nothing more than the belief in simplicity. That means comprehensibility of nature. There are no arbitrary constants that is to say nature is so constructed that it's possible logically to lay down such strongly determined laws which only contain logically deduced constants. Einstein 
in brief, wanted to understand, wanted to calculate fundamental constants. And this would be a real starting point to think about elementary physics. Now, as I said, I have uh, shown and addressed the problems of how space-time is related to fundamental constants. And it's not a theory of everything. I don't claim this. I'm just saying that once we talk about fundamental physics, here are the problems on the table. And let's have a look at the work of smart people in the past who have had significant insights and very intriguing ideas about you may watch also this video which is about the same issue and well as a more general perspective yet i should add that where did all this start if you look at the modern absurdities the things that arkami hamed or witten before had proposed we see this in the tradition of post-war physics and if you look at the history there is a huge watershed between the European style philosophically oriented physics of the first half of the 20th century and after World War II you have this practical applied physics of American style physical culture which then also developed these strange mathematical exuberances like string three and supergravity and all this nonsensical stuff and this is detached from the original successful culture of the physics of the beginning of the 20th century and unfortunately that's where we have to go back and this is what i described in my book make physics great again we have to go back to the 1930s at least to restart fundamental physics so as much as i like sabine hassenfeld's critique and she's really courageous in pointing out this I wish she would touch a little bit more the core of the problem and go to the bottom of it, okay? If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.